Hello learners, welcome to the yet another session of MEV002 course that is Environmental and Occupational Hazards. Today we are going to discuss about mitigation of chemical hazards. Learner, in the previous session we have learnt about different types of chemical hazards and their adverse health impacts. In this session we will learn about their controlling or otherwise we can say that mitigation measures. So first of all we have to see that before going to the mitigation measures one has to check the assessment criteria. So hazard assessment indicators of toxicity hazards like LD50 or LC50 or otherwise a wide range of in vitro and in vivo techniques for assessment of skin and eye irritation or otherwise uh, skin sensitization, mutagenicity, acute and chronic dermal and inhalation toxicity, reproductive toxicology, carcinogenicity like that. So the LD50 is the statistically derived single dosage of a substance that can be expected to cause death in 50% of the sample population. It is therefore an indicator of acute toxicity. It is usually determined by the ingestion using rats or mice even though other animals may be used sometimes. So LD50 is also determined by other routes like uh, by skin absorption in rabbits. So the values are affected by species, sex, age like that. So the LC50 is the lethal concentration of a chemical agent. For example in air or water whatever it is the particle, chemical particle which can have or potential to exert an adverse effect. So that will cause the death of 50% of the sample population. So this is most appropriate as an indicator of the acute toxicity of uh, chemicals in air that is uh, breathed or otherwise in water for aquatic organisms. So first we have to see that what exactly the flammable chemical materials are there. Certain chemicals they have definitely have the fire as well as explosion risks because they ignite easily and also their vapors frequently travel a considerable distance to an ignition source remote from the point of chemical escape. Considerable heat is generated in this process. So many volatile substances which liberate heat at the rate sometimes it may be 10 times faster than the burning wood. So the fire that spreads easily like a running liquid fire or otherwise it is a pool fire or a fire ball. So heat radiation or thermal lift that is normally we can call it as a convection. So along with this explosion will happen that means it is a confined vapor cloud explosive explosion that is CVCE that can be resulted from the ignition of vapor within a building or within uh, the equipment area. And also a boiling liquid expanding vapor explosion that can also be resulted when invented uh, containers or uh, we can say that uh, unvented containers of flammable chemical burst with the explosive as well as violence as a result of the buildup of the internal pressure. So unconfined vapor that is a cloud explosion that can also be resulted from the ignition of a very large vapor or otherwise uh, gas or uh, a chemical cloud. So clearly flammable chemicals they, they will definitely pose a health risk if the substance or its uh, thermal degradation or combustion products are toxic in nature like carbon monoxide or otherwise result in uh, oxygen deficiency because uh, oxygen is consumed. Hot smoke and also other respiratory irritants like uh, aldehyde they are definitely produced in this process. Normally flame propagation requires fuel, gas or otherwise vapor that means or a combustible dust that means to get a flame these things have to be there. So within certain concentration limits and the second is oxygen supply generally from the air definitely it will uh, it will be available. Um, this oxygen supply also above a certain minimum concentrations and the third criteria is ignition source of minimum temperature energy and then the duration of that ignition source. 
So all these three, they are represented by the three corners of the triangle. They are generally present to uh, any substances that can catch fire. But no ignition source is required if a material is above a specific temperature and also no additional oxygen is required if an oxidizing agent is present or sometimes uh, in few cases when oxygen is within the fuel molecule like uh, ethylene oxide as an example. So the flammable chemical handling or the storing or transporting and all these three things and using without any safety procedures that resulted in the hazards like fire and also explosion that leads to health effects and sometimes death may occur. So these can be eliminated or we can reduce by stringent safety procedures. So how to control these chemical hazards? So we will see some of the controlling measures like uh, some strategies for the handling the flammable material uh, to minimize at the design stage itself. So the risk of fire explosion like uh, by substitution with a less volatile chemical or operation at low temperatures and sometimes we can also say that um, avoidance of air uh, ingress or otherwise use of uh, inerting. That means we have to um, switch off the fire that is the otherwise we have to use the inert material and design to minimize leakages and also avoidance of potential uh, ignition sources and also the uh, to minimize the risk of appropriate systems of the work. Sometimes we can also mitigate the effects of fire or explosion by the detection of uh, pro detection provision, uh, spacing, appropriate construction materials, shielding, venting, uh, sometimes it is an extinguishment uh, division uh, and also the evacuation of the personnel. Fire prevention uh, uh, for this type of uh, um, uh, flammable material is present. Theoretically, if one corner of the fire triangle is eliminated, a fire or explosion is highly impossible. But in practice, if flammable gases or vapors are mixed with air in flammable concentrations, sooner or later the mixture is likely to catch fire or explode because of the difficulty of eliminating every source of ignition. For reliable control of flammable materials like a combustible uh, dust, um, the aim is to remove two corners from the fire triangle. So like this, some uh, combinations of a prevention of a mixture forming within the uh, flammable range, uh, sometimes it may be uh, elimination of the ignition sources like this. For example, if you will see the dust explosions. The avoidance and mitigation uh, effects of the dust explosion uh, definitely involves some combination of the elimination of uh, ignition sources uh, which is inherently very difficult to ensure and then atmosphere control like uh, controlling dust concentrations or inerting that dust at the containment of explosion or uh, um, uh, or otherwise we can say that uh, over pressure that is by designing plant which is uh, capable of uh, withstanding in excess of the maximum explosion over pressure or sometimes it may be a safe venting of the forces uh, uh, through blow of panels, doors or membranes and uh, limiting the inventory also. So the restriction of uh, spread by means of uh, uh, these uh, chokers or otherwise by the advance uh, in, uh, inerting. Use of water sprays, it is also one of the important uh, uh, mitigation measures or otherwise we can also use that very rapid injection of the suppressant uh, gas or powder. And also good housekeeping also very uh, much uh, uh, required particularly to avoid a devastating secondary explosion which is followed by the uh, redispersion of any accumulation of the combustible dust. A similar logic is also applicable to the control of the explosion which is involves the uh, gas or vapor but other uh, measurements are also there like uh, dispersion by steam or, uh, uh, or containment of the water curtains. Uh, they are also applicable to uh, vapor clouds in the open air. So containment uh, or otherwise we can say that it is a diversion of a blast um, normally by the blast walls and uh, reducing it effects by the appropriate spacing of the equipment. 
buildings uh, where they are also applicable. Then uh, another uh, example I would like to give is uh, uh, pyrophorex. Uh, these uh, pyrophorics whenever they are using the control measures to reduce the risk from the handling pyrophorics or uh, uh, storage and also the um, uh, handling the quantity that is the minimum quantities are necessary at particular time. Now we will see that how to control the fire. So before seeing or before learning about the mitigation measures of fire, first we have to see that how many types of fires are there. So first we have to see that the type A fire that means it involves solid materials generally organic materials in which combustion normally takes place with the formation of glowing embers. Type B fire is also there that involves a liquid or liquefiable solid that means the miscibility or otherwise we can say that with the water is an important uh, characteristic feature for this one. Type C fire is also there it involving a gas. Type D fire involving a burning material or suppose it is a metal for example magnesium is there, aluminium, sodium, calcium or zirconium. So fire detection and suppression forms the basis of the fire control with emergency backup procedures also to mitigate the consequences. Now we will see that what type of fire extinguishing materials are there. So the penetration and cooling action of water that is highly required with class A fires like uh, those involving paper, wood, textiles, refuse and water is applied in the form of a jet or spray or sometimes it may be a foam or multi-purpose powder extinguishers are also other alternatives. Extinguishment of class B fire can be achieved by the smoothering action of the dry chemical like carbon dioxide or foam. So most flammable liquids they, they will float on water because of the differences in the specific gravity. So that the water as a jet is unsuitable a mist in, in, instead of water a mist may however be effective. And water is also widely used to protect equipment that are exposed to heat. Dry powders are also there, they are also effective on flammable liquid or electrical wires wherever they can't fire. Foam is a, a, a proportioned mixture of water and foam concentrated aspirated with air to cause expansion that means that means from 6 to 10 times the volume that means the low expansion foam. If it is suppose it is up to uh, 100 times there is a high expansion foam. So it transports water to the surface of the flammable liquid and also enables it to float and extinguish the fire. An effective system of this fire extinguish, uh, extinguishers are mainly depends upon the type of flammable liquids that means that determines the type of foam for example standard uh, or alcohol resistant grade uh, they will be used and aqueous film forming foam that may be used for rapid knockdown and uh, carbon dioxide is also useful wherever there is a minimum damage should be caused to the materials at risk on fires uh, uh, like in liquids or solids or electrical fires but not uh, wherever there is a high risk of uh, reignition. So it is likely to be ineffective outdoors due to the rapid uh, dispersion is there because of the air movement. So it is unsuitable for the reactive metals uh, sometimes or otherwise it is a metal hydrides or materials with their uh, own oxygen supply like uh, cellulose nitrate. Dry powders are also there they are also effective on flammable liquid or uh, electrical fires. Special powders are available for the use on metals that is a uh, dry powder extinguishers may be used in class C fires like uh, gases and uh, liquefied gases in the foam uh, in the form of a uh, liquid spillage or a liquid or gas leak. So this must be accompanied by other actions also that is uh, stopping the leak and this is uh, necessary to avoid accumulation of unburned uh, flammable gas air mixture that could be uh, subsequently resulted in the explosion. So activation may be an automatic by a detection of a system or a manual sometimes and vaporizing liquid halogen agents are also electrically uh, non-conductive in nature and they are very effective on wider range of the combustibles particularly uh, flammable liquids uh, and also electrical wires. A lock off system 
that is also there. It is highly required on uh, fixed installations to protect uh, the personal or otherwise the normal uh, extinguishing concentration that will be uh, used 5% uh, by the volume. To reduce the hazards, first thing is modify in the process that is the that is significantly minimize the areas of liquid explosion. And the second point we have to remember is low flash liquids that should be sub substituted by non flammable or uh, less flammable material. And also use of uh, exhaust systems for the removal of uh, residual vapors. And the next one is minimum quantities of the chemicals should be used. And also ensure that there should not be any ignition sources at the storage area of flammable liquids. And also liquid chemicals that receives and uh, uh, dispensing containers should connect properly with the electrical conductor to avoid sparks uh, from the static charges that are produced at the time of pouring. And also another factor uh, that is an accumulation of vapors should be prevented by safe handling procedures like uh, sufficient ventilation. And standard labeling should be most important used for the uh, flammable liquid containers like uh, dangerous flammable liquids. So we have to paste it like that or otherwise we have to paint on that one that is a proper labeling is required. Restricted to heat, sparks and open flames and close the containers when not in use like this. And also containers which provided by the manufacturer should be used to uh, store flammable liquids and also should indicate the hazards by proper labeling. Now we will come to the corrosive chemical material. That means we have seen that what is the procedure of the corrosion and some chemicals which give uh, strong acid reactions frequently on interaction with water like mineral acids. Some organic acids that can also be very corrosive in nature. Phenolics that can be resulted in local anesthesia so that the pain will be absent for some time for temporary that is a contact may go uh, unheeded and uh, halogen compounds are also there acid anhydrides or acid halides they will react with water to form their parent acids. So common bases are also there which they will have these uh, aqueous solutions alkaline certain oxidizing or the reducing compounds uh, and salts of which in the form of a solid that is a bulk or the dust are as a solution that can also be produced by the irritation uh, by the thermal burns. So strong acids and alkalis they will produce effects within the within a moment that is a, for example if you will see that sulfuric acid and nitric acid they will quickly become hydrated by the water content of the uh, skin or mucous membrane and combine with the skin protein to form the albuminates. So sometimes with the charring also happens. So some chemicals are asphyxiants. So uh, asphyxiants what they will do they will interfere with the body's oxygen uptake mechanism. Air normally contains 21% of oxygen. So oxygen deficiency in inhaled air uh, because of the, uh, the presence of the nitrogen or argon or carbon dioxide in a confined space. That means it is depending on the concentration and the duration of the exposure that may affect the body and ultimately cause death from the uh, simple anoxia. And corrosive chemical materials should be handled by the procedures like a correct choice of material of construction by physical means like paints or metallic uh, porcelains, uh, plastic or enamel lining or the coatings or by the chemical means like alloying or coating. Some metals like aluminium they are rendered uh, very passive by the formation of an inert protective film. Some alternatives are also there like uh, a metal to be protected that may be uh, linked to electrically to a more easily uh, corroded metal like uh, magnesium uh, to serve as a um, sacrificial anode. The attacking process is accelerated by the increase in temperature uh, and also other measures like uh, segregation that should be done for all chemicals like acids, bases and organic compounds and inorganic substances. Personal protective measures like wearing a laboratory coat, gloves and chemical splash goggles are also there uh, while working with these uh, hazardous chemicals. And also in dilution procedures are there. So careful addition of the acid to the water, not the water to the acid should be ensured. 
and some inorganic chemicals like sodium hydroxide are very slippery in nature and this type of corrosives uh, we have to clean immediately if any spills or leaks or splashes or dribbles are observed. Working with uh, volatile irritant chemicals like ammonium hydroxide uh, uh, has to be used, if you only fuming cupboard uh, should be used uh, to uh, for the dilution purposes. Eye wash uh, stations and shower stations should be arranged within the 55 feet of the corrosive work area. So we have to ensure that. And also to ensure a packing of uh, acid containers for the leakage or the damage. And we have to follow the proper uh, disposable procedures for the emptying the containers. And uh, wash up the chemicals in case of chemical spills on body by flooding with the huge amounts of water immediately to avoid the severity of the burn. Now we will see that uh, reactive materials of the chemicals. So reactive chemicals are very sensitive towards friction, shock, air, water, light, heat uh, or simply we can say that with other chemicals also they are very reactive. So some uh, uh, reactive chemicals are highly unstable in nature and immediately decompose by releasing energy on their own. So some uh, reactive chemicals they, re they will release sometimes toxic gases while uh, reacting also and some may give the uh, explosive chemical decomposes or otherwise ignite rapidly in the presence of a shock or combustion. So some of the mitigation measures for this type of uh, reactive metals or reactive chemical materials we have to use the guidelines when handling and strong reactive and explosion chemicals like uh, uh, to familiarize the employees with uh, handling and storage techniques and to follow the plan of action which is established by the individual companies and also to recognize the cause of reaction and also isolate the chemicals from the site immediately and reactive chemicals should be stored in cool and uh, dry areas because uh, they have to be uh, kept away from the sunlight and also source of heat. And, uh, and most important thing is to conduct the workshops on usage of emergency equipment, storage of the quantities which are potentially explosive materials in store, their use should be strictly limited. That means the procedures have to be given to the employees uh, before using these uh, chemicals. And also the stores should be especially designed uh, and also constructed for the non-combustible materials and also located away from the other hazards like uh, 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 brick, coal, uh, bunkers which are useful for the small samples uh, but also purpose built constructions with explosion proof lights like this and also required for the larger quantities. They should be designated no smoking areas have to be well labeled and, uh, and also stores that have to be used exclusively for these materials and uh, other combustible materials like fabric paper, organic solvents should not be stored there. So generally the substances in this type are unstable when heated or exposed to light. They should be stored under cool and or otherwise in the dark. However, sometimes liquids with added stabilizers, uh, the cooling may cause a separation of material from the stabilizer. So uh, precipitation is also one of the uh, important factor and potentially explosive compound from a dilution that may occur on cooling. So in both cases this can be represented a hazardous situation. So stores should be ventilated properly and also ventilated for the sound that is uh, no cracks in floors, no rusty window frames, no water seepages like this. Stores should be clean and then tidy and also should be locked properly. So the contamination must be avoided and high standard of housekeeping should be maintained. Heat sources should not be permitted nearby and, uh, and materials should be purchased in uh, several small uh, containers rather than the one large container and also always it is stored in uh, original containers only and also the integrity of the labels should be checked and also the use must be restricted to the experienced workers only and uh, awareness of the hazards and the necessary precautions have to be maintained properly. And the records of usage uh, should be kept and uh, stock should be maintained and also it should be uh, on rotation. And old materials should be disposed of compulsory to prevent the uh, glass uh, fragments from the flying in the event of an explosion. And also there should be um, uh, metal gauzes uh, to screen the reaction flask like that or otherwise it should be kept in the cages.
Uh, for example, for the desiccators, are the vessels of awkward size, shape may be covered with a cling film or the transparent film. And safety features in the chemical engineering operations like inventory uh, and then uh, reduce inventory of chemicals and continuous operations may be preferable to uh, batch and uh, low residence time that is a contacting equipment may be better than the cheaper alternatives and monitoring uh, the temperature and pressure flow composition freedom from the contamination and other appropriate uh, uh, properties of all streams wherever it is a uh, relevant and also we have to consider the automatic control isolation that will provide for the isolation from the upstream and downstream operations and also to consider the provision of automatic and remotely operated uh, isolation techniques and also for the cleaning uh, requires the contaminants that provides uh, and also that provides uh, uh, measures to remove unacceptable contaminants from the feed materials or the process streams and also services like uh, entrained liquids or the tramp metals unwanted particulate solids. Uh, pressure or the temperature operate at moderate temperatures and also moderate pressure wherever there is a possibility. And also avoid uh, superheated liquids that will flash off and also if it is practicable allow for effects of over or otherwise under temperature uh, and then pressures also. And assessment by hazard and operability study that is normally we can call it as a HAZOP. That is a continuous flow with continuous flow operations um, by using a um, proper um, HAZOP uh, procedures. So this type of mitigation measures we have to observe in the uh, chemical hazards. So dear learner I have to conclude this here because uh, every industrial worker may expose to various types of physical hazards like heat, cold, noise, vibration and radiation and also like the chemical hazards like uh, flammable, corrosive and reactive chemicals. So all these chemicals uh, are prone to have adverse health effects on the human beings and also if we want to take appropriate measures then the adverse effect is very high. So the mitigation measures varies in uh, different occupations from the medical measures or engineering measures uh, and also the administrative measures uh, to the legislations. So these are the uh, important uh, chemical uh, uh, hazard mitigation measures. So we have to follow. So uh, we have to conclude over here and then in the next session we will come up with the other important aspect of the environmental and occupational hazards. Thank you.